Well, hello there. How is everyone? I hope you're all well. This is video two of three. Yeah, there's going to be three. There is going to be three. I don't know whether there is three yet, because I don't know when you're watching this video. But today, if you look at my videos, I'll have done three today. And I do it because you're amazing and you deserve it. But anyway, let's get straight into some meat and potatoes. As I'm now doing a video that many, many people have requested that I talk about for a long period of time. And I haven't. I just haven't gone anywhere near it. And you're going to, tell, you're going to learn why in a second. The other day, I did a video that was talking about this crime. The actual crime itself. The doing of the, the, the dastardly deed that cost the lives of these four, you know, poor victims. And I do feel for these. I know I do these videos and many, many people come out and they'll say, you know, they'll, they'll attack you because you, you're showing that you are willing to give someone the benefit of the doubt. You, you're willing to do it. And you, you have to ask hard questions that some people don't like to see being asked and they wouldn't ask themselves. We see it all the time. And it's not just this case. There's many Many cases. It was like the Kylie Rodney case. Kylie Rodney goes to a party with a load of supposed friends and ends up deceased. And I don't believe for one second that not one person who was around her that night didn't know that she had ended up in that water. I do not believe it. I don't believe it. Or never believe it. Never, ever, ever believe it. And the fact that despite they're trying to say that it was ruled an accident and all official people have said that that's an accident, the case still isn't closed. So you can't do a freedom of information request on it. And we always know that when there's a case where there's something that they know if the public get hold of, there's going to be something that raises questions, they leave it open. So it's an ongoing case. It's a trick. It's a dirty, dirty trick. But anyway, I'll digress. So, look, we do sometimes have to ask questions. Well, we don't have to, but we do, because we're inquisitive people, and if you believe in innocent until proven guilty, there are other avenues that you have to. If Brian Coburg gets found not guilty, there's two things that are going to happen. That is, you're going to have to think, well, Brian Coburg is guilty, but he got found innocent. I'm just going to have to let sleeping dogs lie. Or if they bring enough evidence to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he is indeed innocent, and it couldn't have possibly been him, then what are you going to do then? Who are you going to start looking at? Who are you going to start throwing shade at then? Will you possibly then think, well, hold on a second, maybe that eight-hour delay with the, with the roommates was a bit dodgy, and we know that there was evidence that seemingly supported a clean-up because there was a latent footprint outside, you know, Dylan Mortensen's door. And a latent print means it was hidden to the naked eye and was only revealed when they'd done specific tests to bring it up. So, in my eyes, that is proof of the footprint being cleaned. And I don't think you ever did this crime had enough time to stop and start cleaning the floor. A little bit odd, isn't it, when you think that this person who came into this house left in such a hurry, but then there's elements to it that makes you think, hold on a second, or did they? Or did they? Or did they clean up? Did they get changed and everything? And were they able to leave that house actually in a situation that where they wouldn't have dragged anything from the house outside and into a vehicle or anything. Who knows? Who knows? But again, this is, these are questions that you're going to have if Brian Koberger is found innocent. Or not guilty, should I say. There's a difference between not guilty and innocent, isn't there? You know, they can not have enough evidence to say that he's guilty, but then that doesn't necessarily mean that he's innocent. Anyway, so, Jack Showalter, this is my point, Jack Showalter, Jack Showalter is a name that keeps cropping up, keeps cropping up, keeps cropping up. Now, where is Jack Showalter? No one seems to know. Some people, including myself, was led to believe that he had gone to Africa. Um, his parents were involved in work in Africa, aid work, they would help people over there. They'd done multiple, multiple tours, if you like, of of this area and helped the the residents there done a lot of relief aid and stuff like that the family has connections to the college they have political connections apparently now i have tried to look but i am 
unable to find anything that I would say is concrete. And obviously the information that I do see is generally from a third party. And I don't know where they get that information from, so I can't confirm whether the information that they've got is honest. I had some other information sent to me that was of a video that would say that Jack Showalter was actually in Las Vegas. And what I will say, I think it was actually on X, and it was Jules who pointed out how many more people want to fucking have connections to Nevada in this case. It's like everybody, you know, you got Bethany, no, was it Bethany Funk had connections to Nevada. You've got the aunt of Brian Koberger in Nevada. You've got Jack Showalter, who was apparently in Nevada, and do at something connected to the company that Kaylee Gonsalves was going to be working for. Again, I don't know how accurate that is, but this guy is someone who keeps coming up on the radar. His name keeps coming up. Why does it keep coming up? Keeps coming up because he is an individual who had apparently got into arguments. He had a bit of an anger issue. And again, this is just people online who are talking about him. There is a GoFundMe actually set up that is looking to fund getting him in a position where he is back being questioned. And and there's actually a lot of people who have got comments to that. I'm not going to put it on here. I might just give you the screenshot. Um, but yeah, to question Jack Showalter, the, the person who done it has written a lot of information about Jack Showalter. It goes on to say that he was removed from the fraternity because he was leaving the carcasses of dead animals on another fraternity's yard. And this all escalated to the point where he was he was kicked out. And apparently it was he got kicked out of the same fraternity that Ethan Chapin was in. So he's got a bit of a history of being involved in dead animals. We see a lot of pictures of his hunting and, you know, he's obviously, he likes his hunting. And we've spoken again recently over the last few hours about this crime and who could have done it. Someone who was military trained, somebody who had combat experience whether that be through the military or some other form of training, or had just self-taught through either doing things like this. And I thought to myself, because that is it, isn't it? They are generally the only ways that you can become good at something. And that is that you either have training by someone who is good at something, and they teach you, and you become proficient at it, and potentially expert at it, or you... you do something and you keep doing something and you gain and obtain skills over time. Now we know that Brian Koberger, for instance, got fired from his fish flaying job because he was crap doing that. So at the point where he was in that job, it's quite... You can with some confidence say that he was not that handy handling a weapon. And whoever did this crime seemingly was quite good at handling a weapon. And if you remove the military connection and say, okay, we're not going to go with any military connection. We don't want to start trying to point the finger at Brent Kopacker. And look, I was never pointing a finger at Brent Kopacker specifically. Just the fact that I felt and still feel that this crime reeks of someone doing this crime who had training, who had experience in combat of some description. But the alternative is that they were a hunter. And the, 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 the hunting, the dealing with dead carcasses, because you've got to think of that, isn't it? If you'd never done this before, if this was your first rodeo, you have no idea how you're going to react. Can you imagine getting into a situation, and we've been told how horrendous this crime scene was, how can somebody mentally prepare for what they're going to see? Because they don't know what they're going to see. But the one person who would and have some form of mental enhancement to how they handle the sight of, of blood and, and exposed organs and, and things like that is someone who is uh, proficient in hunting. And I think it's fair to say that Jack Showalter was proficient in hunting and therefore proficient in 
utilizing weapons and especially slicing weapons. But I haven't touched it and I haven't spoken on it because I genuinely, when you look online, there just isn't anything apart from people's opinions about Jack Showalter. And an abundance of people who, since this all come out, have obviously thrown everyone's name into the ring. And it's very difficult to to ascertain what someone is genuinely like. But I do feel that in the event that Brian Koberger was to be found innocent, then if we then have to start looking around at people, because it might come, be prepared. Be prepared, it could come. If Brian Koberg is found innocent, this will happen, regardless of how anybody feels about it. And it's going to be people like Jack Showalter who are going to find themselves being prime suspect, in my opinion, which has no bearing on anything. I'm not a professional. I'm just thinking from when you look at the crime and look at who's around the situation... And that seemingly familiarity, knowing who's in the house, knowing how to get in the house and who's where. Who could have got close enough to these people to do what was done? Let me know down below what you think. Or are you still steadfast on it's Brian and you do not need to look anywhere else? Catch you all in the next one.